Pat, we don't really need no introduction of who I am. But my name is Pat Barrett, and you are now watching the Black Class Boxing Channel. Today's topic, we're going to talk about why boxers need their trainers. If he's coming straight from the amateurs, and if he knows it's different, and he knows his trainers is a bit more for the amateurs rather than for the pros, which is okay, and they make that kind of their decision together. But some fighters, when they get beat, for instance, they change trainers, and it's all like it's down to the trainer what they've been with forever, and then they go to somebody else who they think is going to be making much better. But I think to be a good trainer is to have a good understanding with a boxer. For example, myself, I can only talk about myself for instance. If I was to take, if a boxer knocks on my door and he was 10 and 0, yeah, and he was um, brilliant, and he says, can you train me? I would probably reject him. For the mere reason I reject, reject him is that we don't have no understanding. And, and the second thing is, if he's so good, why would he be leaving his trainer in the first place? So he's only going to do the same thing with me. So therefore, it wouldn't be it's no, not of interest to me. But if a fighter came to me who was one and all and said, can you train me? I would be more drawn to that. And I would sit, spend time with that boxer, try to understand that boxer, try to understand why he chose me as a trainer, why would he want me a trainer? and to see if we have anything in common and if I can connect with them. And if I could do them things, then I would say, yeah, I would take on that responsibility because I would rather things so they can learn to adapt the way I would like them to be, rather than them telling me how they should be because no matter what fighter comes to me, yeah, I'm the one in charge yeah, and they come to me to make them better. So they can't be telling me anything because most fighters today, it's all about money. Most trainers today, it's all about money. I don't care about getting paid. I, don't ca I care about making fighters become the best and gaining their respect and taking them to places where nobody could probably take them and making them believe that together as a team, we can be successful. You can always make the style better, but never try and change it. Because I think changing the fighter will be for the worse rather than for the good. And I think a lot of trainers that think they're good that they can change the style of the fighter. No. You can add to a fighter's style to make them better. For instance, an example. Say a fighter came here and no defence. It would be good if you could fight off a defence. Then you would improve his defence. Say a fighter come but didn't really know how to use a left jab and just wanted to fight his way in. Then you can teach him how to box his way in, yeah, and then do what he could do. There's certain things where you can teach fighters and you can make them better. Only small things where I would call that transforming, adding on to their own style. Never try and change a fighter because when you change a fighter, you make them worse. You don't change them for the better, you change them for the worse. What fighters don't do is take responsibility. Responsibility is they don't listen. Responsibility is they come from nothing to get to where they get to and then the whole life changes and social media is, is part of their life and that helps change them. So really, they don't live in the real world as far as I'm concerned. They're living in a dream world where they're looking at thousands of what people are saying, millions of people talking rubbish to them on social media. Yeah, take that away from them. Yeah, and what have they got? Do you know I mean nothing? Do you know I mean so these fans really or the people that look on social media, they're not really the ones that are buying tickets to come see you. They're just following you. And them followers don't really mean anything. They don't mean anything to me. They, they mean that they, they, they like what you're doing on, on social media and they support what you're doing. But if all them fans were to be able to come out and support you, then it would be better. And with some people's um, social media, I say someone like uh, Anthony Crawler. Ricky Atten. I think the fans, they, they're good fans that have been to watch them fight and been following them. It's a different amount, but to fighters of today, do you know what I mean? So they get lost into what's real and what's not real. The only way, say for instance, you've got, um, what's it called? What was his name? 
name now, Roy Jones and um, his father used to train him. And then you had Mayweather and his father used to train him. And they split family issues. It's very, very hard, really, really hard to train your own son. It's really, really hard because I think it's helpful. But I've seen it on the horizon so many times that I always said it's helpful. In the gym, you're just a boxer. You're not related. You, you, we're not family. I'm going to treat you the same as I treat all these fighters. If you talk rubbish to me, you talk shit to me, I'll throw you out. Yeah, I won't, I, I won't tolerate the bullshit. Yeah, you're going to get no special treatment from me because I have to unattach my feelings towards you being my nephew. Because if I didn't unattach it, then it would be personal. Yeah, and I couldn't train it because I'd be too sensitive about it. So therefore, I'm being regimental. I'm being a horrible father. Horrible. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you're in here to do what I want you to do. And that's for the better for you. And that's the same with Lyndon. I've known that these kids have, have reared from, I mean, the family, I've reared them from nothing. I mean, Lyndon from, he learned to box in that gym. He couldn't fight, he didn't have to go. You know what I mean? He took him off the street and brought him to the gym. And Brian said, this kid's going to be a good kid. You know what I mean? And same with Zelfa. And to see where they are now, yeah, from one trainer. Yeah, that's myself. And it wasn't our training, it was our program from here. And then they're trying to deprogram themselves every so often. I remember Brian you telling me this, and I'll never forget it. When a fighter stops listening to his trainer, then you've got no connection, you've got nothing. You might as well let them go. And I agree with him. Yes. I can see a massive touch of it. If a fighter goes in a training camp, yeah, it's like being in the army. It's very regimental. Because you live the correct life. You have no distractions, you have no people, no mates coming to see you, no phone calls, no nothing. The only thing that you've got is a cook, your trainer, and your sparring partners. That's it. That's what a training camp is. People use the word, oh, I've had a good camp. As in like, it's bullshit. Because a bit of good camp is where you're out in, in, in the woods somewhere, in a log cabin, just you your trainer walking through the woods, nice walk and talk. You know, for six weeks, yeah, for six weeks or for 12 weeks, your mind is just there. You don't even know what's going on in the outside world. You're not on social media. You might have a phone, but you can only answer it and say, hi, talk to your kids on it. Then, certain time, see you later, that phone goes in that drawer. Oh, look. You know what I mean? You get one phone call a day, phone home. That's it. That's what a training camp is. A training camp is like prison. And trust me, I've been there. Okay? And when people talk to me about training camp, what's training camp? They've never been on training camp. Trust me. There's, a, there's very few boxes now that are on real training camp. The training camp is a house on the social media. You know what I mean? It's bullshit. A fighter will always leave a trainer yeah, because they always seem to think that it's the trainer's fault. A fighter is never brave enough to be responsible to say, oh, I got beat for not listening. Oh, I got beat because I didn't do this. Oh, I got beat because of that. They're always going to say, I got beat, and they always think that it's somebody else's fault. And I don't know where it comes from. Yeah. I mean, to, to make a change, you make a change for the better, not for the worse. Do you know what I mean? And if you, <laughs> the funny thing is, they're undefeated in, 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 in so many fights, they go all the way, and then they get beat in one fight, yeah. Then the million dollar question, who's to blame? Me, I take responsibility for everything that happens in the gym or with the fight against me. Because maybe I should have made him listen, maybe I should have done this, maybe I should have done that. People might say, oh, it's not your fault, but it is my fault. I will take full responsibility because I should never, ever I'll let a fighter tell me anything different. I should never, because from day one, it's either been my way or no way. And if you're not prepared to listen, there's the door. And that's what Brian always told me. If a fighter doesn't listen to you, Patrick, send them out. Fighters are unpredictable. 
and you don't know what's going through their mind because it's not them, it's the next person that talks to them that talks them away and leads them away and makes them believe that the grass is green on the other side. And there's been a lot of shit like that in boxing for a very, very long time. And there's been a lot of a lot of disloyal boxers that come, walk in, walk out, and thinking that it's all, it's been like this for many, many years and it will never change. I would never advise a boxer to do anything. Yeah, if you come to my advice yeah, and said this, you know what I would tell them to do? Go and sort it out with your trainer. Yeah. Go and sit down and have a heart to heart and sort it out. Because if you can't sort your difference out, then you probably won't have no point. But I'm not going to tell you what to do. My advice to you is go and sit down and be a man and don't bitch about it to somebody else. Take it to him first. Because the way it is, I just show him up. Because you're talking to me about something that I don't want to know. So I mean, and it's not for me to say, because before you know it, it's coming out of my mouth that I've advised you to leave. Oh, perhaps I just should be better on another one. I'd never say that. Yeah, no. You make it, if you're a man, you make your own decisions. Yeah. You make it better than you're lying in.